Hi, this is Cindy from the Paper Studio. Today I want to talk a little bit about tools for book and paper arts. Um, when I teach classes, that's probably one of the first things I get asked is what are my favorite tools. A lot of people who are new to book arts um, will get you know, a supply list of tools and they're not really sure what they are. The last class I taught, people were like, oh yeah, I have a bone folder, I don't know what to do with it. So I want to just kind of talk about what some basic tools are. If you're new, new to um, book and paper arts, it's one of the few, I guess, arts that you, you don't have to invest a whole lot. You don't have to buy a kiln. You don't have to get an enlarger for a dark room. Um, you do need some basic tools to make you successful, to help you do a really good job. But um, what's nice out there is there are some nice little packages. I'm just going to show you one because it has everything. You can certainly buy everything separately as well. Um, when I started making books about, oh, about 15 years ago, he had to buy everything separately. So, um, but anyways, I actually keep a couple of these around because um, I do work at my home studio. I do work here. And so I kind of have a couple of kits that I like to work with a lot. The first thing I want to show you, um, this is a little kit by Zutter. The thing I like about it, it does have pretty much everything I use all the time. The number one tool that you use a lot is a bone folder. The bone folder has um, a few different purposes. It has, everyone wants to use the point in anything that they're doing. Um, it really is for scoring. So um, this is nice too because it has a little metal ruler. Um, so let's say that you need to make a crease in a piece of paper. You can score it. Um, that'll make a nice line. It'll help you fold it. Um, so that's what the point is for. People are always performing surgery on their books. They're like folding and digging around the corners, which you don't need to do. Um, the other thing that um, this is good for is for, for creasing. So let's say that you're going to fold this piece of paper and you want to make a nice tight crease. So that's for creasing. That gives you a nice sharp creased edge. Um, very nice there. And then the last thing this is really good for is for burnishing. So most of the times when I make books and I'm laying down paper, I use my hand to feel if there's any wrinkles. Um, but I use this to burnish lightly, you know, to help me smooth down something that might be sticking up. But I do a first cursory feel with my hand just because I can feel it if something is wrinkled. And then I do a nice light burnishing. One tip is you never want to burnish um, too hard and you don't want to burnish um, book cloth because you'll leave shiny marks if you're using this type of a bone folder. So um, the next thing that is kind of a key tool is an X-Acto knife. Um, the key with this is you need to change blades frequently. <laughs> you need to have a sharp blade. This is for cutting. Again, the best way to cut um, with an X-Acto knife is you want to um, cut against a metal ruler, a straight edge. A metal ruler is nice because then um, you can go right against the edge. You won't cut into it and cut nice and cleanly. Um, plastic ones you'll just kind of you know dig into. This is a little tiny portable one. I recommend everybody get about an 18 inch one. Um, they're totally um, worth their weight in gold. Um, the other thing that's uh, highly valuable is a poking tool. Um, this, they've got this kind of little fun thing here that's got um, this little compartment that also holds your needles. Let's see if I can get them out. There we go. So this has got different size sewing needles in it as well. So you can um, switch and put, um, you know, if you have different size tapestry needles, it's a nice little compartment to hold your needles. Um, and then it has a little awl for poking as well to make holes. Um, say that you're sewing signatures um, or you need to poke a hole. It's kind of a nice little thing there. Um, having a pen handy is always good to take notes. Um, another thing I like is spare blades. I can't emphasize enough with an X-Acto knife, you need to invest in blades. Um, when I took a class with Shireen LaPlante, uh, several years ago who wrote cover to cover, Shireen just said just buy a hundred pack of blades and just know that you're going to have to change them you know, every other day. So at first I was grimacing and then I realized she's right, you need to have sharp blades. Tape measure is really good when you need to measure all sorts of things that maybe your ruler isn't going to measure. Um, scissors, detail scissors are um, highly worth their weight in gold because you can cut very detailed things if you're working in, say that you're cutting out 
like a circle in the middle of something and you need to get in there. Detailed scissors are really wonderful, so um, they're definitely worth um, getting. Um, a pair of pliers is another really good thing to have on hand. Um, and then a, a pair of wire cutters as well. Those are some really good basic, basic tools that um, I think you'll find are really handy. And you know, a lot of companies make different kits. Zutter makes this little kit. It's you know, $24.99. You get all the basic tools. Um, I want to show you a couple of other things that I kind of can't live without. Um, cutting mat number one. You need to have a good cutting mat. This is a self-healing one. They have a bazillion different brands, but I always work right on top of my cutting mat. I use it as my work surface. That way I never cut into my table and then I can always just cut right wherever I'm at. Um, I showed you the one exacto knife with the pointed blade. Um, the other type I use is this type here. It has these little snap-off blades. Um, I love this uh, because it it has the snap off blade, so you always have blades with you. And the one key thing that I find that no one ever shows people is it has this little um, thing in the back. It's not a hanger for your pocket. It is actually to help you snap off the blade. It's got this little slit. You just put it right on there and it helps you snap that blade right off so that then you have a fresh blade ready to go. So I find these incredibly um, wonderful. So I always use these. I also use a Teflon bone folder a lot. Uh, Teflon, nothing sticks to it. My regular bone folders tend to have a lot of glue on them because I'm a little messy. Um, but these, nothing sticks to them. And the other reason I like them is if I'm doing a box, they have a straight edge and I can get in there and make my straight edges and my corners really nicely. You can burnish book cloth lightly with this. It will not make shiny marks on book cloth. It's the only thing i found that won't. Um, so I like that. A couple other things. Um, I like these uh, mono tape, double-sided tapes. They are really wonderful. Um, for book binding, I always use PVA glue. Um, and just, I use it in the bottle and glue straight up. But, you know, if I'm doing something quick like a card, I use these double-sided tapes. On the glue issue, one thing I want to emphasize is you need to use a brush appropriate to the size of your project. That's probably the number one thing I see people um, get a little bit crazy about. I'll teach Book Binding 101 and they'll come in with a brush this size to do a book this big. And so it's like, you know, trying to paint your house, you know, with this gigantic brush. Really, a book this size, you need to use a brush appropriate to the size of the project that you're using. So um, you just kind of need to keep that in mind. So I just wanted to walk you through some of my favorite tools. Hopefully that gives people an explanation of you know how things are used. Again, the bone fold is probably the number one key. You're going to use it for scoring, creasing, and burnishing. Um, really the point mostly for scoring or maybe for lifting. So if you need to lift you know some wet piece of paper up, you know, if you've got glue down. But really don't dig around with it. That's probably the number one thing I see people do is they dig on their paper when it's wet and then they make a hole. So don't do that. So hopefully these tips helped you out.